Okay, finally, this is a very short video where we're introducing conditionals. Um, so now we have to extend our language. And again, this is, this is a very important part that might, um, that you might ignore, and I hope you don't, uh, because it's defining our language, what we know so far. So currently, we are adding the notion of conditional. So we have that an expression is either a value, a variable, a function call or end and conditional. Uh, and the conditional is what we're going to learn now. And er, or and end was just learned in the previous video. Um, so a conditional has the syntax where you open parentheses, cond, right? And then you have branches. And each branch uh, you use parentheses around. So in this case, square brackets. But in racket, it's actually interchangeable. You can use uh, any that you want. And then you have condition and expression. Condition, if the condition evaluates the true, you're going to um, evaluate an expression. Um, and the condition is either an expression, right, a Boolean expression, or uh, you can write a special thing called else, which always evaluates the true, so you would return that. So a cond works basically as an if, like an if-then-else in uh, usual programming languages. So you write cond, and then you write one branch, another branch, and another branch, and so on, right? Uh, and inside this branch, the first thing you see is the condition that is being evaluated. So if this happens, do this. Else, if this happens, do this. Else, do this. Right, so it's very simple. Um, and now we're going to... I'm just going to write a simple example. I'll start by copy-pasting this. We don't have a um, ver way to define variables so for now, right? So I'll just write 10, 10. Um, so if 10 is greater than 3, we're going to return 100. And then if 10 is greater than 1, we're going to return 200. Otherwise, we're going to return 300. So in this case, what do you think is going to be the result? Maybe think about a bit, a bit about that. Try to answer. Um, maybe pause the video. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so if I run this, actually, let me comment this out, uh, the code before. Uh, I'll, I'll make available this uh, in the exercise of today's lesson. So I'll comment this out. And if I go here and I evaluate the booleans, I get 100. Why? Because the first expression is true, so therefore it returns 100. So now if I uh, copy paste this conditional, let me just pull this up. Uh, so if I write something obviously false, such as false, um, and I write one, oh, sorry, this is fine, then I would get 200, right? Um, the other example would be evaluating um, doing this, oops. Which would then return 300, right? So I'm expecting to see 100, 200, and 300. So nothing too crazy. You can do any expression. It doesn't have to be a value here, as we saw in the definition. Let's look. It's any expression. So if it's any expression, it could be um, 10. Oh, sorry, 10 plus 100. And we can see that we have 110. So this expression evaluated and return the 110 here. Um, and we can also see, for instance, if I were to write an error here, um, that the error is not evaluated, right? So this, this expression right here the way the evaluation works is it goes through the first expression and evaluates that. If that returns something that is not false, aka true, then you evaluate whatever is on the, the branch. Otherwise, you go to the next branch. But if it returns false, you do not evaluate this. Okay, so in this case, um, first expression returns true. Right? So uh, the error is not triggered. Uh, regardless of what you have here. So if I write this, okay, 
So another example that I can do that is also important is uh, not just this expression is not evaluated, but also this condition is not evaluated. Let's see. See, it doesn't care. It doesn't care whatever expressions you have here because it, it works exactly like an if then else in usual programming language. So it evaluates one by one. And if one of them fails to uh, evaluate to true, then you continue. But if it does return to true, you stop evaluation wherever you were. So it's important to know that. Um, and here, again, in this case, it's the last situation, also does not eval here. So second example. Um, second example is also important because it's saying that there's something that should evaluate, but it's not evaluating. Um, right, because the first, the, the condition here evaluated to true. So if I were to do error, does this evaluate? So think about that for a moment. You think this would evaluate? This is the condition of the if then else, right? So let's see. Yes, it does evaluate, right? It evaluates because this is the first one, so it always evaluates. So let me do, uh, let me go back and put it as false so that the whole thing, right? So try, try peppering these errors in the various spots to see how things work. I think that's an important exercise to do as well. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. And in the next video, we're going to talk about declaring variables, which is crucial for any programming language.